The Fred Minnick Show is brought to you by the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. Visit sfspiritscomp.com for more information on our double gold and best in show winners. That's sfspiritscomp.com. Welcome back to the Fred Minnick Show. This is episode four. Got a cool interview with Ed Kowalczyk from live coming up. But first, I got to tell you, this is awesome for me. The, uh, this podcast, the Fred Minnick Show, is now sponsored. The presenting sponsor is the Beeline, a Northern Kentucky bourbon experience. Look, I've been going to Northern Kentucky for a decade. I take my family there, and they've got a special new um, effort called the Beeline to basically combine all of the of the bourbon distillers and the bourbon bars that are up there. It's a mashup of five Kentucky bourbon trail craft distilleries and six unique bourbon bars and five bourbon focused restaurants across Cincinnati and the edge of bourbon country. This place is great. A lot of people fly into Northern Kentucky to hit the bourbon trail. You got to check this out. You can learn more at findyoursippingpoint.com. That's find your sipping point.com. Now, before we get into the kind of regular style of this show, I got to share a nacho story with you. If you follow me on Twitter, which if you don't, just go there and you know start following me. You know I love nachos. Every so often, I will just kind of talk about how much I love nachos. It is probably my favorite, you know, bad for you food right now. That's taking. I mean, nachos for me beat pizza and and hamburgers and all kinds of other crap that I could eat. I just, I love the crunch. I love the cheese and I love, uh, I love a good jalapeno and some kind of meat over there. I just, I love nachos. I mean, I like the simple nachos, uh, the complex nachos. Well, I was, I was basically creating my Super Bowl experience with my oldest son all around the nachos we were going to eat. We were going to go to this place called 502 Bistro, which I contend makes the best nachos in Louisville. They have a beautiful queso that goes over. It got this perfectly like seasoned chicken and the jalapenos are kind of like a slightly pickled jalapeno, but they still got that crunch. I just, it's my favorite nacho in the city right now. And so we walk over there and it says we're closed. We were just absolutely devastated. So we're desperate at this point. My son's six years old and he can't He cannot grasp the fact that somebody would be closed on Super Bowl. So we're walking to the next closest place that has nachos. And we go there. We sit there. and We're kind of tucked in the corner. Neither one of us are really excited about the food here. We're just kind of like, oh, I don't want to eat here. We just... And we're, we, we have to look up where we both get spraying necks if we're watching the football game. So I said, let's, let, let's go home. Let's eat nachos at home. He's like, but, Dad, home is boring. I was like, don't worry, son. I am going to get the perfect nachos. And it, the, keep in mind, kickoff is about 30 minutes at this point. It's about 30 minutes away. I get in my car. I speed. I mean, I really, I'm doing like uh, illegal speeding. This is this is hazardous stuff. So if you're a cop, I don't think you can retroactively write me a ticket. But if you were on the road right then and there, you probably would have given me two or three tickets. But I get to Kroger in time. I get like all the all the ingredients that I need to make my perfect nachos with the exception of the jalapenos. I couldn't find jalapenos anywhere. Maybe it's because I was in such a rush and I didn't really want to look, but I found everything that I wanted, made the nachos, and my son uh, ate some with me and my wife had some, and we had the perfect Super Bowl experience. And it was the first time that I got to watch the Super Bowl with my two boys. So I just wanted to share that with you. It was a great amazing uh, daddy moment. I just, it, it was great. I love it. And I, if you guys have cool daddy moments or mommy moments like that, please share them. And I, I will always read them on the air because here's the thing. It's like, we're, we're into music, we're into good drink, but at the end of the day, you know, life is about our family. And if we can't, uh, if we can't share those good stories around a, a good drink and some nachos, then what are we here for? And so I also want to thank you all for making this podcast such a success. I can't tell you how excited I am that this podcast is like continually to climb the charts. Right now, as we speak, this is an international podcast that is ranked all over the world. And right now we're ranked number two in Slovenia. Now that's actually not by you know coincidence. I spent some time in Slovenia, Slovenia uh, a decade ago when I was really into covering wine. 
And so I actually developed some friendships there. So I'm, I'm glad to see that my Slovenian friends are still, uh, are still keeping up with me. And I, if you haven't had any white wine from Slovenia, you're missing out. They make some great white wine there. And this, I uh, just want to read a, this beautiful tweet that uh, Tucker Sutton sent me. Just listen to your podcast. You are a most fascinating person. Your colorful and vivid descriptions of nose and palate and finish are truly unique. Picked up Henry McKenna, 10-year-old, bottled bond a week ago, excited to open it up and sip. Tucker, thank you so much. That mean, That means the world to me. You know, this podcast isn't all about the whiskey, but it is it is bringing that whiskey and good drink to the conversation with with musicians. And, and, and that means the world to me. I, I, I really I really do mean that. And I got to tell you that when I started like, you know, creating this in my mind of what this podcast would look like, um, I, I had no idea. I had no idea how how many things would come together and make this a great success. And I couldn't do it without my team. I got an incredible team. I got Jessica helping me out constantly. Pamela Furs, the producer here. Uh, Clay Bush has been helping me book people. And, of course, the sponsorship team, Allison and Gary, just great people. And I, I am so excited about this episode because let me tell you why. Uh, Ed Qualchek's the lead singer for Live. Live if if i were to pick my top 5 most influential bands of when i was you know in high school live would be in that top 5 and and you'll you'll hear it here in a minute but i grew up in oklahoma and in 1995 we had the we had the oklahoma city bombing and th- that that was the first uh, moment of my life where kind of the the innocence was lost where i started to see that people were you know could in in large ways be shitbags and and that was that was the first moment of terrorism that I personally felt of in, in a big way. And I would actually go and volunteer, uh, try to help the firefighters and everything, uh, you know, clean up the rubble and what have you. But there was a, a music station there, uh, 100, uh, 100 The Cat, and it's spelled K-A-T-T. And they did a mashup of, uh, of a live song, Lightning Strikes, and it had... In a, it voiced over all these people talking about the bombing and the and the uh, the the people crying. It was lightning crashes, not strikes, and all these. And it was just very emotional. And it was very impactful on me, and that song just stayed with me forever. And so, anytime I think of the Oklahoma City bombing, I think of that song. And I dare say there are a few songs that kind of capture my feelings and in mood of a time of my life than uh, lightning crashes from live. And so this interview with Ed Qualchek, I was kind of, when I was going into it, I was really wanting to talk about music and everything. But here's the thing. Ed is such a whiskey fan. Ed is such a big fan of all things bourbon and whiskey that we just end up drinking. And so really this interview is just two guys sitting down, drinking and talking about whiskey and cigars. It's a lot of fun. And but he really did kind of like bring out some of my old memories after I went back and re-listened to this and just even hearing his voice. And so this week's this week's trivia is and the, the trivia is always going to be about bringing some kind of beverage together with music. And so this week's trivia focuses on a genre of music that was created in Oklahoma, you know, a decade or two ago. There was a particular type of beer named after this genre of music. What was this genre and what was the beer? That coming up after the interview, but first, a word from our sponsors. At Michter's Distillery, our passion is making the finest bourbon, rye, and American whiskey possible. When you only produce very small batch and single barrel whiskey as we do, each and every barrel has to be perfect. No detail is too small for our production team. From careful attention to the 18-month or more air-dried wood used in the construction of our barrels, to entering our distillate into the barrel at the costlier or lower barrel entry proof of 103 so that it's smoother, to heat cycling our barrel houses, to our signature filtration protocol, we spare no expense in pursuing our goal of making the greatest American whiskey. And no Michter's gets bottled until our master distiller Dan McKee and our master of maturation Andrea Wilson say it's just right. Mictor's Fort Nelson Distillery in downtown Louisville, Kentucky is open for tours and tastings. Book your visit on our website and stop by the bar at Fort Nelson for a world-class cocktail. 
For more information, follow us on social media at Michter's Whiskey, go to Michter's.com, or visit your favorite bartender. Michter's Distillery. It's all about the whiskey. Imagine this, an experience centered around five Kentucky Bourbon Trail craft tour distilleries in northern Kentucky, the gateway to Kentucky bourbon. Add five amazing bourbon-centric bars and five delicious bourbon-focused restaurants, cultivating the freshest takes and culinary delights, and you are on the beeline. Start your trip today at findyoursippingpoint.com. Welcome back to the Fred Minnick Show. I'm Fred Minnick. Uh, it's brought to you by the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. I'm joined by Ed Kowalczyk from Live, lead singer. My, uh, I've been listening to you for a very long time, and Live is a very impactful, soulful band. Thank you. That is one of the last great bands from the 90s. Thank you. Have. I appreciate that. Thank you. And I, I want to share a story with you. And... Um, I grew up in Oklahoma. We had this we had a, this tragedy, the Oklahoma City bombing. Right. And the DJs there did a remix with a lot of your music, and it was the most touching, impactful sound that yeah. I've ever heard in my life. I remember that. Well, um, it was just one of those crazy things that happened, you know, with the music that you, as a writer, you 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 dream that your music it will impact people as you're sitting there in your bedroom or whatever writing it, you know, yeah. but you never, you really don't have any idea what's going to happen, you know, and where it's going to go. And, and that was one of those moments where I remember someone sent us the recording, you know, um, of that sort of mashup they did with like the news and like the headlines and kind of over, it was over lightning crashes. And, and I remember just being like totally moved and totally blown away that, that the song and had was being consumed that way and produced that way and just was in some small way helping people to kind of hold the emotions and the of that tragedy you know and it was just a bitter of course bittersweet moment but sweet as a writer to know that yeah the song did that you know and was able to do that i love i love that you 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 feel you like people being feel connected yes to the music and and whiskey, you know, there's there's a lot of, you know, we tend to look at alcohols like this is what people just get intoxicated on sure. or whatever, but the whiskey makers they really want people to feel connected to it and hope it has like a good, uh, positive impact on their life. Yes, this is meant to be enjoyed. Yes, it's an art, you yeah. know, just like anything. Yeah. So I what I want to do Ed, is I want to, uh, I want to pair something specifically to your palate. I'm okay. going to ask you a series of questions. Got it. And I'm going to pick something uh, from my bar here, from uh, Bourbon and Beyond, and pour it for you. Love so it. So let's go. Let's start here. Do you like? Do you like banana? Do you like the? Do you like bananas? I am a banana fan. Yeah. Would you say it's like your favorite fruit? Or I would say I'm a pretty regular consumer of the banana. Okay. Do yeah. You, and do you like? Do you like caramels? Vanillas? And caramel. Yeah. Bananas. Foster's a favorite. Nice. You know, dessert. So. And when you, mm. would you rather have like? Um, the dough of like like a cobbler or a pie like Ooh, the fried dough that's in there that's mixed tough in with, the, with that fruit. i'm probably 50 50 on the dough versus cobbler but i'd have to go cobbler okay so what i'm going to do i'm actually going to pair outside of outside of kentucky bourbon i'm going to pair you with a jack daniel single barrel that i meant selected. to be <laughs> meant to be <laughs> so this has some brilliant some brilliant um, uh, banana notes oh, and great. kind of like a peach cobbler note in there I'm 21 by the way yeah in case anybody was wondering you just had a birthday congratulations well you know thank you cheers so when we taste this what we want to do is first we want to nose it you stick your nose in there you open your mouth a little bit just kind of run it around by st opening your mouth, you're actually mm. relaxing the old oh, factor. Yeah. I'm able to take up a little bit more. And then when you sip it, you just want to sip. You don't want to shoot it back. Just gotcha. just a little bit. Gotcha. Wow. 
Spot on. So good. I feel like we need it because you're a whiskey fan. I am. How long have you been drinking bourbon? You know, oh gosh, years. Um, I'm a cigar guy too, so I like to pair that with. Uh, there you go. See, everything's here. I wish I could actually. We could smoke it. I know, right? Can't but smoke anymore some, anywhere. Some, something about the uh, uh, the rules here. Yeah, my boy Paul opened that up for us. But so yeah, I mean, I've uh, you know definitely as you know my younger days I didn't think about what was going on with the you know delicacies of the the f- smells and the flavors and the pairings but but as i've gotten older i definitely you know got more sensitive to which cigars go with you know scotch and which i like with bourbon and with there's some great distilleries in uh, i live in connecticut it's a really great one i'll, I'll check it. can i give a shout out to litchfield distillery in uh, litchfield yeah. connecticut they're great wow. um i'll have to send you some that's great I like that yeah so now so we'll set, we'll put, we're going to give you one of these to take home. Thank we got, you. We've got a whole gaff, gift bag for you, but I want to get you oh, something. I uh, I'll, there's, um, Thank you. Do you like a note called marzipan? Do you know what marzipan I is? I love marzipan almond, yeah. Yeah, so grab me that barrel of bourbon right there. It's not open. In the back. In the back. Right there. There we go. So this is batch 21, 10 years old. It's a blend of various various bourbons, and oh, this yeah. it has a really prominent marzipan note in it. Love marzipan. Sweet. Sweet. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's nice. As we say in Pennsylvania, money, money. <laughs> <laughs> really good. What do you normally drink when you're on the road? You know, it's funny you pick Jack Daniels because we do consume a fair amount of that, you know, responsibly. Yes. But I find that, uh, you know, a little bit before show is yeah. really a good tonic for the throat and the soul. Again, See, some, responsible. I'm not getting hammered. Well, <laughs> I can lose track of it because it's good. But generally speaking, no. have, have you, if you, if you do find yourself a little bit to the right of that responsibility window, yeah. Can do you still, do you still bring it on stage, or do you, do you feel like you got in a up? red solo cup? Yeah, <laughs> it's not you know, guns. We can't do the old school Guns and Roses, you know, look of like you know the big half gallon jug on stage that's got the plastic going on and stuff. You know, not that. Yeah, they're backstage. We keep them in a nice, uh, a fine solo cup, not like, unlike this fine glass here. But yeah, I'd, you know, so Jack Daniels has always been a, a fave. Um, and it's funny because Jack Daniels, you know, you think about it as like a kind of a sort of a more pedestrian kind of everyday. Everybody yeah. knows it and stuff, but it's amazing. And Jack Daniels owns rock and roll. They really do. And yeah. It, and, it, and it's in their DNA. They actually hired a guy back in the 50s to follow Fra- Frank Sinatra around. To make sure he always had Jack Daniels on him. We had a really beautiful gift from our uh, promoters this summer, um, from Live Nation actually, for, during our tour that we were just on with, they, and they gifted us uh, the Frank Sinatra, and I sent it home unopened. So I'm very much looking forward to. Uh, oh, nice! I basically stole it from the other guys. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I kind of lifted it. Don't tell Chad Taylor. Well, I'll tell you this: this particular Jack is is uh, I picked this barrel this uh, really to cool. support uh, the the Operation Homefront, and oh, so cool. so this to, this is actually in tribute to, to bringing you know uh, veterans home. Oh wow! I didn't their, know that. And their their families. Fantastic. So it's um, there's a lot of Jack Daniels gets a lot of shit, but it's actually they're pretty good whiskey. They yeah, they really are. I enjoy it. Do you? What was your? I'm, I like asking people this question. What was your first drink? My first drink, oh gosh, it was beer. Definitely beer, like Schlitz, something terrible. We graduated quickly nice. to uh, better beer, but yeah, do you guys get Schlitz down here? Does they even make Schlitz anymore? Yeah, I don't think we. I don't see Schlitz. Right let's here. not. Let's not see Schlitz anymore. You know, we, we do see a lot of PBR. 
See, that's like, yeah, I mean, it was around, but yeah, didn't have the prominence that it, it has now back then. So, yeah, it was something something cheap. Yeah. So I feel like we got one more in us. Yeah, let's since do you're it. Su- since you're such a whiskey fan. I, and I'm, now I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, give you a taste of what is one of my American Whiskey of the Year contenders at the moment. So what wow. I do every year... I do a uh, a tasting, a blind tasting, and I select I, I select what is my best American right. whiskey. And uh, I'm also a judge on the San Francisco World Spirits Competition, so I have a lot of Whoa. lot of like fun things that I'm doing where I just taste blind and pick. Cool. And this right here, I only have a little brand, bit left. Yeah. This is their uh, their it's a new batch, and I, I'd like you to kill that bottle with me if you're down. Let's for do it. it. This is uh, Elijah Craig. Uh, batch B519. I think we need some fresh glasses. He was about to throw one, and we have, <laughs> and the gentleman actually uh, handed it to us. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. This, to me, is a, is a bourbon drinker's bourbon. <laughs> yeah, does, does that go in the gift basket? Uh, Is I it get, in the, the gift? empty bottle. The empty bottle will go in there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah, there's not a lot left, and here. it just keeps on going yeah, too. It's it just pretty keep, complex. The gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, killer. Wow. So what's what's new for live? You're touring. You're working hard. Yeah, we um, we actually just finished a, the majority of our s- summer tour. Um, we were touring um, with uh, Bush. Uh, oh wow! It's called the Ultimate Tour. Yeah. Bush and Our Lady Peace, and that was, geez, most of the summer we were in Europe, and now it had, that actually that tour extended. Um, we picked back up in a couple weeks on that for three more, and then I think we're gonna head home to uh, good old York, Pennsylvania, and make some new music and see what uh next year brings us we're we're celebrating the 25th anniversary of throwing copper this year so wow you mentioned lightning crashes that so that was that was actually 1995 that wow that that the mashup happened that yeah. around the bombing and stuff yeah. so that's yeah that's 20 25 oh and i'd be remiss especially in this interview to not to tell everybody that we do have a great beer the throwing copper ale uh we teamed up with uh, alasta brewing company out of uh in a where are they in orange county there in southern california covina and they did an incredible uh copper ale mm. for this the tour and the cans look incredible but the beer's even better shameless plug throwing copper ale so i mean you should do a whiskey then if you've done a beer metallica's We're doing it Slipknot's so doing we it. should do it you should, I mean, Absolutely. I, I actually, I think you all would do, g- given the fact that you're like such a whiskey fan, and you know how to find flavors. Let's do it. I and I would be happy to help you if you needed to. Uh, I was just gonna say, like, we may need some connections. Yeah, let's do it. Let's let's do a whiskey. I love it. What are we gonna call it? Um, what would? How would you? What would you want to brand your whiskey? You know, man, rock and roll. You know, melody. That's a meditation I'm going to have to have. That is a very profound consideration. The it is. The answer will be in the next time we're together. Thank you so much for joining Pleasure. me. And uh, once again, this is the Fred Minnick Show brought to you by the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. Go listen to live. It's the truth. Cheers. Thank you, brother. How about that interview with Ed Qualchak from live? We may have inspired a whiskey from live, and hey, why not? Slipknot has one, Flaming Lips, and Metallica, they all have their own whiskey. Maybe live should have one, too. Yeah, we'll find out. But I'm sure we'll, we'll get to taste that before, uh, before it comes out. If it, if it does, I'll let you know. Now, the trivia question, what was the genre of music that led to a genre of beer? The answer to that is named af- it's, it's named after, they're both named after the, the, the dirt in Oklahoma it's called red dirt and if you ever ever spent any time in Oklahoma you can just there's mounds of red 
everywhere and it's basically the, the it's like clay uh things do grow in it but it's it's not one that's very pretty if you will but that's what it it is what it is it's kind of like here in Kentucky we got the the bluegrass there's green everywhere there there's red dirt everywhere and so uh, 10 I, I, I want to say it was early 2000s to about 2008 this genre of music kind of came out called red dirt red dirt music and it was it was a cross between um uh, outlaw country a little bit of rock and roll and, and bluegrass so i'm very familiar with it because my brother was in a bunch of uh red dirt bands uh back in the in the early days and it's a it's a lovely you know genre of music and the the there's now a whole series of of american ambers that are being branded as red dirt ale there's a texas one called destination red dirt ale that i happen to have tasted and liked quite a bit so give give that a sh- check out you know take a look at some of that uh, red dirt music while you're at it and sip on a little bit of red dirt ale now that'll do it for this week's episode make sure that you are you're going to itunes or or, or wherever you're listening to this podcast and give it a give it a rating uh give it a review i'm telling you this all helps the the algorithm helps people find out more about this podcast and if you want to tell a friend go ahead just say hey check it out it's combining music and good drink make sure you're following me on youtube twitter instagram facebook um you can find me under my name it's fred minnick and that's m-i-n-n-i-c-k next week we are going to include an interview with wayne Coyne. Speaking of the Flaming Lips, he's the lead singer for the Flaming Lips and a very, very interesting guy. He comes sporting an ascot. Until next week, we'll see you later. You've been listening to The Fred Minnick Show, brought to you by the San Francisco World Spirits Competition at sfspirits.com. Also by Michter's American Whiskies and by Beeline. Visit findyoursippingpoint.com. For more information about this podcast, spirits, and more, go to fredminnick.com.